Hi everyone, welcome back to Requirements Engineering. Today we'll talk about business case analysis. So from previous discussions that we've had, we know that a business case analysis is usually something that comes in as an input for our work. First point today, why do we even talk about this? Then what is a business case? How do I write one? What are the individual elements for it? And what tools are available to help me out in doing this? First of all, why? Rudyard Kipling said, I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. So that gentleman was an English story writer, poet and novelist, and he was born in Mumbai and he moved to London. And he did a lot of tales and poems of British soldiers in India and my personal favorite that this gentleman authored was The Jungle Book. Anyways, he tells us how important it is to always question the why and to learn more about a specific context. So a business case is an argument, usually in a documented form, that is intended to convince a decision maker to approve some kind of action. And the document itself is sometimes also referred to as a business case. Now the analysis process that we have to follow through for this is to start with some kind of preliminary business case decision based on the knowledge that was available and then decide do we know enough? If the answer is yes then we try to move on to the final judgment and then finalize the charter, complete the project and end the project. If we know enough to move forward with it, then we can go to a tentative charter for, say, the next stage of the project, for a project increment. And every time new information comes in, we add it to the available knowledge and then make another tentative charter. Or when we have sufficient information for the final decision on the project, we move on into finalized charter and completing the project. The format of a business case is to help us understand what's the problem we're trying to solve and then describe a couple of solution opportunities. How can we address that problem? And then to describe the approach. What are viable solutions and viable options to implement a solution? We also have to talk about the risks associated with each of those project options. And what's the risk if we don't do anything? So business as usual, do nothing is always one of the alternatives that you want to talk about in your business case solutions part. And in the end, what's the value analysis? How are we generating business value from each of those options? And based on that, we can decide which option we're going to go for. The business case analysis document is often structured in the seven sections you can see here on the slide. The executive summary, problem statement, analysis, solution options, project description, cost-benefit analysis, and recommendations. In the following, we'll look into each of those sections. The executive summary is a high-level view of the business case document. It is represented in a very condensed form in plain language. The content of the executive summary is the problem that the proposed project is intending to solve major considerations that were taken, the resources that we require to complete the project, the desired outcome, predicted return on investment and a projection of by when that return on investment should be achieved in the future. Now, careful. You know, anytime you write an executive summary, a lot of people who get a hold of this document may read only the executive summary. So it's really crucial to include the most important bits and pieces of information here. Everything that is essential to an informed decision. If your manager ends up only reading the executive summary, you still want them to take the best decision based on your analysis. And with regards to the order, like the abstract of an academic article, we present that executive summary first, but of course we have to do the analysis first and then after the rest of the document is completed, we improve that executive summary. So we may draft it early on, but we certainly need to revise it at the very end. It's kind of the business card for the rest of your document. 
Next part is the problem statement. It's a straightforward articulation of the problem that the project is supposed to solve. And it identifies the area or areas where there are issues that need to be addressed, such as some inefficiencies or some opportunities that we may have missed in the market, some unacceptable market performance, maybe in a specific niche, or unfavorable customer response or consumer response to a product or service. In the analysis, the third part, we try to explore the situation behind the problem in more detail. So we try to understand how we got into that problematic situation in the first place. What was missed before? What was the information that we failed to see? Or the development that we failed to recognize? We also include some general projections about potential events if the current situation continues. So if we assume we're not going to change anything what we're doing, what does that mean in the future? Does that mean we're just going to not increase our growth? Does that mean that we're going to lose market shares? Does that mean we're, we're going to be out of business pretty soon? What is the extrapolation? And then the conclusion of the analysis should naturally lead to the next section. For doing a good analysis, we need some tools. So what are the tools that we can use? An obvious one is any business information websites and data services like the Security and Exchange Commission or Hoover's or NASDAQ and Dow Jones. Then we have news sites like the Wall Street Journal, Business Week, Fortune, Money. We have CNN, New York Times, LA Times, and so on. Search engines. Yes, plenty of alternatives. Lycos has the advantage of having a highly customizable search with Boolean terms. Alta Vista scores higher with keywords early in a document. Excite matches synonyms for you. And Yahoo has a catalog created from submissions by the actual authors. And then there's the ever-present Google. I just wanted to point out to you that they're not the only ones that you may want to use, depending on what type of search results you're looking for. And then individual company web pages that may have some good news sites, maybe some news that your customer have has forgot to tell you, um, maybe some annual reports that we could look into and learn more about the background of the business. So make use of all of those analysis tools. Now, there is a lot of number crunching to be done when we do that analysis. We try to reveal the data by background research and then develop some charts, tables, and graphs to support our statements and extrapolations into the future. But we gotta be careful with internet resources. Winston Churchill said, do not trust any statistics you did not fake yourself. And what he meant to say by that is not necessarily that everybody out there is a liar, but more that you can present information in a very compelling way to suggest one interpretation over another. So data often allows for different interpretations. And we can see that in the following example. Yes, this is from XKCD. And they posted this beautiful comic on cell phones and cancer. Another huge study found no evidence that cell phones cause cancer. What was the YHO thinking, World Health Organization? Um, well, I think they just got it backwards. Huh? Well, take a look. And then you see this graph in the middle that says, in the United States, we have total cancer incidents rising spectacularly around the 80s, early 80s, mid 80s, into the 90s, and then kind of staying the same or even decreasing a tad. And then we have the number of cell phone users going up like crazy from about 1990 onwards. Um, you're not there. There are so many problems with that statistic. Well, just to be safe, until I see more data, I'm going to assume that cancer causes cell phones. Okay, I guess most of us know that that isn't true. But it is an example that illustrates really nicely how we can interpret data the wrong way. So what we see here is a correlation, but not a causation. The next section in our business case are the solution options. So as we see in the top right corner, problem, need, mission, 
filtered uh, with constraints into a vision uh, can then be implemented by certain solution options. So in this overview graph, if we ask how, we go from the top level to the bottom. And when we ask why, we want to be able to trace back from the solution options to the vision and to the problem. So in our solution options part, we try to identify potential solutions to the problem and describe them in sufficient detail so the reader can understand them. So if, for example, the solution proposed is the implementation of desktop virtualization, you would define the term and discuss the use of technology within your industry. And for most problems out there, there are multiple solutions possible. So you should explore all the solutions that are potentially the best option. Why? Isn't that a whole lot more work? Well, if your business case analysis lands on the desk of a manager and they quickly flick through it and they're like, well, did you also think about that solution? And then they don't take a decision. So you want to show them that you did your homework, you considered all possible options for a solution and drew the conclusions from that. Fifth part is the project description. So in this section, we describe the project, including all resources that are required for its implementation. That also means the project budget and a timeline with measurable goals for the project milestones. Otherwise, we won't know if we have the milestones achieved. And we also want to list any assumptions that the reader should be aware of. For example, that government regulations pertinent to the project won't change. Um, because there could be changes in the law. But if we have to make assumptions about that, then our scope changes potentially a lot. So that may be too much to pack into one document. You should also list any dependencies, like the completion of other projects, or the availability of key individuals or stakeholders, or the main experts that you need to realize it. And note that any risks involved with the project, and briefly sketch out a plan of how you would deal with them if they come into existence. In the budget section, we want to have financial projections for the most relevant metrics. The most relevant one is always the return on investment in an economic company and the total cost of ownership. Also, project potential scope creep, often an additional 15 to 20 percent. Last but not least, identify and describe all the stages of the project, which includes a post-project review. So include measurable criteria that we can, at the end of the day, determine the success of the project. Number six, cost-benefit analysis. So in that section, we want to figure out for all the options, including the proposed solution and the most likely alternatives, uh, which are the costs and the benefits. The likely alternatives also include don't taking action at all. Try to illustrate your case with data from similar projects and case studies, if that is at all possible. We often have charts and graphs in this section that make it easier to understand what the trade-offs are but you could also stick them into an appendix at the very end of the document. In any case, graphs can illustrate points that are hard to understand from just narrated text. So most of the time, having a couple of well-visualized graphs in there is very helpful. We also want the projected financial benefits to the company in there and a projection of when the payoff is expected, as well as an overview of the major risks to success. Last but not least, recommendations. So in this section, we make the overall recommendation for the project and how it's to be conducted. It's a brief statement of what the compelling results are going to be of the uh, cost-benefit analysis. And then a final statement that this is how you believe the project should be going ahead. You also want to articulate the circumstances under which it should be undertaken, like referring to some key stakeholders, referring to some key actions, and include a recommendation for scheduled re-examination. If there is any question uh, for the availability of some of the key resources, make that very clear here. And the recommendation for scheduled re-examination should happen on a regular basis. Finally, refer the reader back to any relevant document sections and the graphical representations where that may be helpful. 
because the second version of speed reading, after I'm only going to read the executive summary, is to read the executive summary and then the recommendations. So that's why you want to refer people back to the most relevant graphs. Now, just to give you a first taste, a couple of mini examples. One is for Tablets for Health Systems, Mobilizing High Quality Care by Intel. And the other one is a digital signage study, Proof of Performance in Digital Signage by On Campus Media. Ask yourself two questions. What kind of business case analysis can we find online and in print media? And what do we need to be careful about when we look at those? First one, example for tablets for, for health systems. So here we have a hospital uh, uh, in the Balearian Islands, like Mallorca or Menorca, and they use tablets to tell us how much better they can take better of their patients this way. It shows the company background, a little bit of the challenge, then the solution to this, and it presents the benefits. Anything missing? What are the risks? So it presents only the good side of this case. Second example, digital signage case study. Proof of performance in digital signage. Return on investment for advertisers. So if we do digital signage, how can companies make the most money with this? And here on the right hand side, we have a couple of happy um, employees or happy company representatives that want to testify to the main advantages of this way of doing advertising. Again, what's the downside? We don't know. They don't quite tell us. We do see a couple of recommendations. This is how you're best going to make, make use of this. Mm, they do even tell us how to measure it with the measurability challenge and provide us with some data that seems to suggest that this is a good way to go. But we're not that sure about the risks. Now, at the very end, your checklist for any business case that you want to write in the future is you want to see whether your problem statement follows naturally from the analysis of the situation. And then does the problem statement clearly indicate that action needs to be taken? Is the list of the potential solutions to the problem adequate or is it missing any solutions that could also be a really good way to go? Is the project description detailed enough or is it like step one, step two, miracle, profit? Are the data and calculations in the budget section correct? Do we have enough supporting data in the cost-benefit analysis and have we approached at least one major stakeholder for preliminary support? And finally, it's first page, but let, written last, does the executive summary include all the essential elements to follow the same order as the complete document? So that your decision maker takes the right decision at the very end. Here we see a couple of website references for more examples on business case studies. And last but not least, a couple of references if you want to follow up on this in more detail. Thank you so much for taking the time. After the business case, I would like to say it's the after party. <laughs> business analyst is going to the after party because their work is done. But as a requirements engineer, that's usually where we start working. So in your work, you might be more likely to understand a business case as opposed to writing one and to then develop the vision based on that business case. So a good business case is the foundation for developing a good requirement specification. And the more you get to talk to your business analyst, the better. If you get a business case document that's well written, that's great. If you get to talk to the analysts themselves, even better. That's it for today. Thank you so much.